I paid $8 for these jeans and they retail for $700. Probably the best item I have ever pulled out of the bins. <laughs> This week I sourced at three Goodwills, one local thrift store, and made two trips to the Goodwill outlet, and this is everything I got. I have all this stuff separated into piles, so we're gonna go through it pile by pile. The first pile we are gonna go through is the stuff that I sourced, listed, and sold all within the same week. The first item we have are Melissa McCarthy for seven. These are the pencil jeans. These sold for $17.50 on eBay. They're a size 24W. They are skinny jeans. I was a little hesitant in picking them up because they aren't necessarily in style anymore. So I just priced them to move and they sold within three days. The next item I picked up is this Tommy Bahama Seahorse Print Lightweight Cotton Long Sleeve Top. I listed this at $25. It sold for $20 offers to likers on Poshmark and this took about two days to sell and I got it at the Goodwill outlet as I did the Melissa McCarthy jeans. The next item is this Johnny West shirt, heavily embroidered, super cute shirt. It is an older style and it did have flaws on it. It had stitching messed up on both sides and it had an oil stain on the front. But with all that, I still was able to sell it for $25, my full asking price on eBay. If it did not have the flaws, I think I could have gotten more for it, but I did pay $2 for it at a local store, so I'm not too mad about that sale. Next, I picked up this vintage Sears retro mod style tank. It is 100% virgin wool. I did research on this tag, and it seems to come from the 1950s or 60s. There wasn't many comps to go on, especially for this specific style, but all the virgin wool stuff I sold didn't seem to have that high of comps, but I listed it at $35, which I felt was above comps, and it sold for my full asking price almost instantly. I didn't even have a chance to cross list it. And the last item that I thrifted and sold this week, actually I have one more, but it's kind of buried in the other piles because it sold right before I started filming this video. And these are these Lily Pulitzer Bay Breeze shorts. These are a linen blend short, perfect for summertime. I picked these up at the bins and they sold for $26 off Mercari. Next, we're gonna get into my shoe pile, which I actually have the least amount listed from this pile because I hate cleaning shoes, but I, so I only pick them up if I know there's going to be a high profit margin in there for me. So I'm very excited to show you guys what I picked up this week because I feel like I thrifted a decent amount of shoes this week. The first pair that I picked up are these Schutz heels. I don't really know how to pronounce it. It is a mid-tier luxury brand. I believe they sell it on Revolve. This specific style seems to have a really good sell-through rate. I don't just look up how much do Schutz mini heels go for. I will use um, Google Lens to take a picture of the shoe and see what the style is. I will then go on Poshmark, look at the solds versus the available listings and determine the sell through rate from there. I listed these at $45 and I paid $5 for them. At that same local thrift store, I picked up these Pedro Garcia shoes. They are a really pretty wedge with this unique bottom to them. These retail for $525 and I bought them for $4. And I listed them for $165. I did list them on Monday. It is Friday. There is no likers on the item yet, but we will see. I think with a higher price items, it just takes a little bit longer to sell. Now these shoes are a little bit out of my comfort zone because I live in Florida and we don't find a lot of outdoorsy gear here, but I did pick up these Keen shoes. These are the Winthrop boot. I paid $7.99 for them and I think they will sell for about $50 and they seem to have a pretty decent sell through rate as well. There are a few scuffs on the leather and it is missing something on the back, but the bottoms are in excellent condition. My Uber Eats just got here, so I took a quick break, ate lunch, and my airy package was outside as well. And while I was eating lunch, I got an offer on one of the items in here as well. So we have a new item to put in the source listed and sold Monday through Thursday pile. So, well, I guess it technically sold on Friday, but whatever. Um, but yeah, let's just see what I got from my airy package. I'm actually really excited. I don't normally shop for myself online. Oh my God, these are too cute. I'm obsessed. There is that, now back to the shoes. The next item I got are these Nayote sandals. I love selling this brand. I've sold them twice before. One sold for 35, the other 45. These I paid $3.99 for and the bottoms are in excellent condition. And the last two times that I sold these, they had a really quick turnaround time. So I'm always excited to find this brand. The next item I picked up are these Nike Gore-Tex running shoes. These like seem to be very like streetwear style. They are the Nike Trail Pegasus GTX. I was drawn in by the Gore-Tex. The comps on these um, in beat up condition seem to be about $50, but I am gonna clean these and see how they come out. I paid 10, I'm hoping for a $30 profit. The next pair of shoes I picked out are arguably the weirdest shoes 
I have ever sourced and probably the weirdest ones I will ever sell. And these are Vibram. These are the five finger toe shoes. I, you know, I don't judge the people who buy my stuff. I just want their money. Um, I spent $8 on these and I think I can sell them for 50. They seem to be in pretty decent condition on the bottom. They do have some wear, but I just have to put in some time and love in cleaning them. The next pair of shoes I sourced this week are the most designer craziest shoes that I sourced this week. They are these Salvatore Ferragamo loafers. I even came with this little shoe insert ordeal. They have the buckle on the front in my experience selling Salvatore Ferragamo shoes, when they have the buckle on the front, because most people know exactly what this is, it's very recognizable as Salvatore Ferragamo, they tend to have a quicker turnaround time and a higher uh, sell price. Um, I have a pair of Sar Ferragamo shoes currently listed that have no detailing on them. They're just pebbled leather. They're very basic lace-up flats. Those ones are not performing as well. Um, and yeah, so I'm thinking these will sell fast just based on that, but they do have a wear on the bottom. I did pay $10 for them. They do have some wear on the bottom. They're not in the best condition. Even if I sell them for like $50, that is still a $30 profit. So I was very excited to find these shoes. Now we're going to go over all the other stuff that I thrifted this week. Um, the first one we have is this vintage Mercedes jacket. I priced this at $35. It is a women's small. It's weird. I got it from the bins. I think it will sell quickly. The next item I got is actually the one that I accepted an offer of on my lunch break. And that is this Luciano Louis Alvier leather jacket I listed it at 45 I accepted a $30 offer especially with going into summertime I'm not really trying to hold on to stuff like this but I always look up leather brands when I'm at the bins because you never know what you can find the next item I source is this Chico's wool duster vest it has a little fluff on it it is a size 3 which is a Chico's XL great sizing it is 100% wool and it is a vest I listed this at $30 next we have this Victoria's Secret Sport University of Florida cute little crop top and this I listed it at $18. In my experience, UF Victoria's Secret stuff sells well for me. The next item I got is this Plenty by Tracy Reese and Knit Bodycon Pull-On Skirt. This was probably one of my more questionable pickups. Plenty by Tracy Reese is a good brand, but this is an outdated style, so I only listed it at $20. Next, we picked up one of my favorite lag and look brands, and that is Oh My Gauze. And this is just a very lag and looky type of skirt, very art to wear, artsy, has this cool little detail on it. This I listed at $35. Had it not been so lag and looking and cool, I probably would have priced it around $30 because it felt like a more special piece. I did list it at $35 and we will see. Next, I got this Abercrombie & Fitch short sleeve shirt. Abercrombie's making a comeback, especially like Y2K styles. I use keywords like Bella Swan, Elena Gilbert. Those type of keywords sell your Abercrombie. Next item I picked up are these Old Navy and new tag shorts. I think this is going to be the last week that I am sourcing Old Navy. It is just not moving in the same way that it used to. Although I did sell two Old Navy items this week, I felt like they were listed a lot longer. I don't mind picking up $18 items, but they need to have a very quick turnaround time. And Old Navy used to have a quick turnaround time for me, and now it is just sitting. Um, but these are the OG high-rise shorts. I got them because they're new with tags, and they're a size 18+. plus. The next brand I got is a Bolo brand. If you find this, it is a pretty good brand. I got it at the bins, but mine is damaged, so I only priced it at $30. But this is repeat cashmere. It retails for a ton of money. And it is just a beige little cashmere sweater. The reason I priced it at $30 is because it is missing a button. Although it does come with a replacement button over there um, on the care tag. It has a hole on it and it has a stain. So with all that, I did price it at $30. If you have one in great condition, you can get more for it than I did. The next item I pick up is a bins only type of pickup. It is a brand Monroe. I used to really like selling this brand. I haven't sold it in a while. This is just a gray v-neck t-shirt and I think I could get about 20 bucks for this or at least that's what I listed it at. The next item I picked up are these Fabletics joggers. I don't like to pick up all Fabletics. I really only pick it up one if it has a tag on it with the size because I'm not going to be there measuring Fabletics. It doesn't retail enough or resell enough for me to pick it up without a size. And it has to be a good style because not all the leggings do well. This is a nice little jogger style. I believe I listed these at $25 because that's what the comps were warranting, and it seemed to have a pretty decent sell-through rate as well. The next item is another Bolo brand. If you find it, pick it up. This I found at the bins, and it was one of my best bins finds of the week, although I did have a bins find that topped it, if you can believe it, because this I priced at $150, but that is this brand, Savrio Palatella. I have never heard of this brand before. I picked it up because it was with another expensive item, and lo and behold, it retails for hundreds of dollars. It does have a flaw on it, but even with the flaw, I priced it at $150. 
Here is the flaw. It does have a snag on the shoulder and it has already had one like on it. So I am very excited about this find and I hope to find it again soon. Maybe one in perfect condition because, you know, maybe that would sell faster. The next item I picked up is my White House Black Market. I really only like to pick up their newest tag and also I only am really picking it up at the bins. This is a size 8. It's just like a square neck top with a belt. It's pretty basic. It's nothing special. I'm trying to be a lot more selective with that brand because the turnaround time on that brand isn't great. Um, the next item I got is by one of my favorite lag and look brands and that is the brand Habitat and this is my favorite size in the brand which is an XL lag and look brands the bigger the better I priced this at $25 it is a white item and thank god it had no flaws because it's from the bins and you always have to be careful with white from the bins it's gone to the point where I don't even want to pick up white at the bins but that one luckily was okay. And the next item I got is by the brand Project Social Tea. This is a brand that I used to sell a lot in the past and I haven't found it in a while. I found it comps were okay. I think I listed it at $20. Next item I got is a Lululemon sports bra. This is called the Free to Run Wild bra, something like that. You'll see it in my listing here. This one in this specific print had decent comps and I priced it at $30, but not all Lululemon sports bras have a high resale value and I noticed Lululemon in general is having a slow or turnaround time for me but this seems to be a more sought after print and a newer style the next item i picked up is by the brand denim and supply ralph lauren and it is just a little gingham top they are a ton listed of these and the soles actually are decent but it doesn't have a high sell through rate but those ones that have sold have a decent price so in order for mine to sell faster i just kind of priced it lower than everybody else but it is just a really cool gingham top that is perfect for the summertime and the last item i picked up is by the brand cloth and stone and it is just a gray little mini skirt which i've been recently doing a look through my closet and my statistics skirts are like the least popular thing that i sell um, so I'm trying to be really selective and really only get them at the bins, but here we go. Cute little Lyocell cloth and stone skirt. Another one that arguably maybe I shouldn't have got. So the two questionable ones from this pile are both the skirts. The next thing I picked up is another weird item and that is a llama onesie. This is by the brand Secret Treasures, which they do sell at Walmart, but it is new with tags. It's also plus size. It is a size 3X. It seemed to have a decent sell-through rate on it, and it's also selling for a decent price considering it is Walmart, so I did price it at $25. The next item I picked up is by the brand Style & Co, but this is vintage, and they are like high-rise straight leg jeans. They are not tapered, so I did not call them a mom jean. They are straight leg, so I did use the keyword dad jean, 90s, Y2K, vintage, and we will see how these do. They're not really a brand that I would pick up if it was a current piece, but in vintage, I'll pretty much pick up any brand. Next, I got a Kashyyyk bra, which is the Elaine Bryant Intimates line. This is a 40 triple D and I priced it at $18 or $20. I don't remember, but you'll see it here. Next, we have this Chico's piece. This is very art to wear and very Valentine's Day, even though I sourced it the week of Valentine's Day. Probably not my smartest pickup and some of the uh stitching on the fort is a little messed up it is vintage chicos i mean i'm not too picky with my chicos whether it's vintage or not i am selective with chicos but not in terms of if it's vintage or not it really has to do with the style it's a very artsy style again maybe one of my more questionable pieces i priced it at 18 although it did already have an offer sent out on it on poshmark but they didn't accept next i picked up another y2k piece this is just like a y2k boho piece it is new with tags i don't think it's vintage um it's just a y2k style it is by the brand unique i don't know what that brand is i don't think it's anything special i priced it at 20 dollars. i use keywords like y2k boho bohemian indie gypsy all the keywords next i picked up a varley sweater which i picked up at the bins last week and then this week i picked it up at a normal goodwill i paid four dollars for it i listed it at $50. It is a size small and it is just this cute little ribbed knit sweater and it has these zipper details. Whenever I'm buying stuff at a regular Goodwill, it's so important for me to look up sell through rate at the bins. I'm a bit more flexible at a Goodwill where I'm paying lots of dollars for things like $4 compared to my average cost of goods at the bins, which is $2 and under. Um, I really like to look up sell through rates. It has a pretty decent sell through rate. The next item I picked up, I got at the bins and it is a <laughs> Mr. Beast shirt. This is a youth extra large. I don't think it sells for very much. I listed it at $20. There's not too many comps to go on, but Mr. Beast is one of the most popular YouTubers in the world. He is probably one of the most subscribed to YouTubers in the world. And also it is a youth extra large. And I think his primary demographic is the youth. So here we go. We have this little ice cream themed Mr. Beast logo graphic tee. Next, I got a life is good 
graphic tee this is so cute it has a dog on it it is a men's size small so not the best size ever although that men's jacket that i just sold the leather one was also a men's size small um so don't always discount men's size smalls i don't typically like to pick them up this one i bought and i listed at 20 dollars, and it came from the bins next i got two tommy bahama silk shirts they are very similar except this one is an xl this one is a size medium but they both have similar flaws on them so this one I priced at 20 this one I priced at 25 because the flaw in this one is very hidden and you can't really see it when you're wearing it. I just like to pick these up. They're not like the quickest movers ever, but they're just like a nice little bread and butter sale for me. And I tend to find a lot of Tommy Bahama living in South Florida and it is a brand that retails for a ton of money. And a great keyword to use for these types of shirts, especially when they have the pockets on the front is camp shirt use that keyword. It'll help your item sell. The next item I picked up, I cannot believe I have pulled this out of the bin and I cannot believe I was the only, I was not the first reseller to go through this bin, but nobody wanted to pick it up, I guess. And that is a Derek Lamb 10 Crosby for Intermix. Maybe I don't know something is 10 Crosby, the diffusion line. All I know is Intermix, a very expensive website. Derek Lamb, also very expensive designer. And this is a white knit fringe top and miraculously there are no flaws. It has the definitely the type of knit that pulls. It is definitely the type of color that stains and it has no flaws. I believe I listed this at 35 or 40. Next, I have a J. Crew men's cardigan. It is J. Crew outlet, but it is a size XL. It has cool contrasting buttons on it. I listed it at $25. We'll see how it does. Next, I have a J. Crew Duster cardigan. I got this at the bin. It's a size extra large, which is a great size, and I priced it at $30. In my experience, Duster cardigans tend to do well for me, and especially XLs in fall brands like J. Crew also tend to do well for me. So there's a lot of great factors in this piece, which I think it'll sell pretty quickly, other than the fact they're going into spring. So that could throw some things off. But other than that, it has a lot of great factors. Next, I picked up another part piece that was arguably questionable considering we're going into spring and it is a heavy knit jacket by Ann Taylor. It is a black gold, pretty heavy knit, very wintry, but it is a size extra large. I do like mall brands in the size extra large. I listed it at $25. We will see what the turnaround time ends up being. The next item I picked up is actually one that I'm pulling out of the bag and I'm realizing I had already sold it, so it really should have gone in my other pile. And that is this Bonobos jacket. I was really interested to see how it does. I guess we know how it does because it was only listed for two days. It sold for $24 or $30. I don't remember. It'll be included right here. Um, and this is by the brand Bonobos. It is a size medium and I used to pass on this brand until I saw resellers talk about it on YouTube. Now I pick it up and look, we have a sale in less than two days for $24 or $30. I don't remember which. Next, I have a really cool Y2K find. I am so excited about these jeans. These are low rise jeans. They have these cargo zipper details and look at the hem. They are drawstring ruched hem. Super cool. I use keywords like Y2K, OO, thousands, aesthetic, early 2000s, Bratz doll aesthetic, why a hipster i'm trying to think of all the ones in my head baddie like so many different keywords go with this can possible vibes i don't know just think of keywords put it on there depop girls will literally search anything so we have these super cute i priced them at 30 dollars. next i picked up maybe something i paid too much money for but we are going into summer and i just loved it so i bought it and that is this disney hawaii hawaiian shirt it is 100 percent embroidered and it is by disney parks authentic it has a men's xl and it is just a fun little hawaiian shirt I think it shall sell because of the seasonality. I did get this at a regular Goodwill and I paid $6 for it. Next, I picked up this cashmere scarf. This is a green cashmere scarf. This is by the brand Saks Fifth Avenue. It is 100% cashmere and I listed it at $25. I picked it up because it seemed to have a pretty decent sell-through rate on eBay and it came from the bins. Next item I picked up, I kind of regret picking up because it does have a town embroidered on the side. If Had I known that, I wouldn't have picked it up. But it is a Harley Davidson polo shirt and it says a Naples, Florida on the side. Side. Again, if I had saw this, I wouldn't have picked it up because it's a little bit too specific for me, especially because there's nothing special about the piece. I still priced it at 25. We'll see what happens. Next item we have is another item that's sold already, and this is the this is the Tommy Bahama Caillou uh, jersey t-shirt. This one does not have a very high price. I sold it for $14. It retails for about $65. The comps were pretty low on it, so I just priced according to comps and it moved fairly quickly for me. Next, we have an Airy bralette. This is a size extra large and it is new with tags. All things I love about selling Airy, new with tags and extra large. Love that. It is a pretty mint color, perfect for springtime. And I listed this at $25, which some may call ambitious, but I say 
let's just go for it. <laughs> Next item I got is by the brand Umji and it is just a distressed sweater. This I it does have a flaw in it that I missed at the bins so I priced it relatively cheap at like $15 or $18. Next item I picked up is by the brand Generation Love. This is sold at a high-end department store. I don't know exactly which department store but it's a high-end one and I've had two prior experiences with this brand. They both sold with a quick turnaround time and a high profit margin. I picked this up at the bins without hesitation. Come to look at comps, they're only between $12 to $20. And the available listings are between $50 and $75. $50 and $75. So I price according to the solds and not according to the availables. And I price mine at $25 and hopefully it'll move quickly. But I'm sorry, I'm not undercutting you as a seller when people have previously sold it from $12 to $20 and you're asking $75. Your item's just not worth that. I'm sorry. Next item we have is a Gretchen Scott tunic. This one is a size large. This one I did not price to move. I priced it a little higher because we're going into summertime. It is a lightweight cotton tunic with heavy embroidery on it by an expensive brand. I listed it at $40. If I was pricing it to move, I probably would have priced it around $30. And this also came from the bins. The next item I have is from a regular Goodwill. I paid $8 for these jeans and they retail for $700. These are St. Laurent jeans. Yes, St. Laurent as in YSL St. Laurent. I got these super cool jeans. They are a skinny fit and they are, but they are low rise. So we got the Y2K low rise, although they are skinny, which is not the most in, but it's St. Laurent. And if you find St. Laurent at the thrift store, you're going to pick it up no matter what as long as it's relatively cheap. And this is $8, which is super cheap for this brand. They retail for $690. I already listed them. Comps uh, told me to list them at $120. So I followed. So not that the retail is anything, not that the resale is anything special according to the retail price, but still $120. I bought them for eight. I am super happy with that. The last item I have in here is by the brand Free Fly, a brand I've sold once before and had a good experience with. These are athletic shorts. I bought them for $6 and I priced them at 30 and I'm hoping to move them relatively quickly because these also have a really good sell-through rate. We're going through our last bag of stuff before we get into the stuff that needs a little extra love. That is the very last pile and that one has the best bins find in it that I have ever found in my entire life. So stay tuned for that. Um, so yeah, let's go through this. First, we have this Victoria Sports sports bra. I'm very selective on the Victoria Sport, Victoria Secret that I pick up. This I did uh, look up comps and I listed it at $25. Getting it at the bins, that's a pretty good profit. I got two Chantel bras. One of them I haven't listed yet, which is the black one. These are both the Retro Chic full figure bras. The style name for this is 855186, I believe. I have that memorized because these bras have a 100% sell through rate for me. Anytime I list them, they are sold by the end of the month. And yes, I just love picking them up. At most, I will pay $4 at a Goodwill from them. They do really sell for me anywhere between the lowest one I sold was $17.50 and the highest one I sold. I'm, the lowest one I sold was $16.99. The highest one I sold was $24. So when you're buying it for four, not huge profits, but very quick turnaround times. The next pair of pants that I got is also from a regular Goodwill. I haven't process them yet. These are, I paid $6 for. They are by the brand J. McLaughlin. I forgot the exact style name of these pants. I will have it up on the screen, but these have a pretty decent sell-through rate. And if you want to sell this brand and you want to sell it quickly and you want to sell it for more money than everybody else, make sure you know the keyword Catalina Cloth. That really changed the game for me in selling J. McLaughlin because before I didn't know that keyword and now I do. And I notice a big difference in the price and the turnaround time because people who like to wear it use the keyword Catalina Cloth. That is what they're known for. Next item I got is a pair of funky print pants by J. Crew, and they are a wide leg, very on trend. They are a size zero and I priced them at $30. The next pair of pants I got are by Banana Republic. These are the Sloan Fit pants and they are just a cool little plaid pant. I was really debating between pricing these at $25 to $30. If I really wanted to price them to move, I think I could have priced them at $25. I priced them a little higher at 30 because I did see a sold at 28 for them. Next, I picked up One September, which is an older anthropology brand. I priced it at $18. I priced all my older anthropology tops that I get from the bins at $18 and they always sell for me. Um, newer stuff, I will go out of my way to look up comps, but older stuff like the tops, definitely just 18 quick bread and butter flip. Next, I picked up a Lily Pulitzer top, one of my favorite summer bread and butter brands. I find it a lot down here in Florida, although a lot of people do take it to the consignment store. So I mainly find all, all the basic pieces at Goodwill. So this one I got at Goodwill Outlet and I priced it at $25. The next item I got is by a brand I've had pretty good luck with in the past and that is by the brand Jules and it is just a striped sweater. 
and it's a great size. It is a size US 14. This is the Seaport style, and I believe I priced it at $30. The next three items I have came from my mom when I went to go see her on Super Bowl weekend. She gave me a pair of Blair Hudson skinny jeans. They're not really on trend, so I probably would only pick these up if I found them at the bins. Um, but because I got them for free, I'm going to sell them anyway, but I would not buy these at a regular Goodwill because skinny just is not it right now. Unless you looked up the sell-through rate and they had a good sell-through rate, I personally don't know at this current moment what the sell-through rate is on the Blair High Rise Super Skinny Ankle, but I can't imagine it's amazing. So I will price these to sell. Next, I have these loft shorts that she gave to me with these cute little lemons on it, which are perfect for summertime. And then we have these, this Guy Harvey shirt that she bought for my brother. He never wore it. It's still in the packaging and it is from October 2022 Halloween release. They don't retail for very much money. It was $25. I'll pr probably price it at $15 and hope it moves quickly. The next item I got is a super cool polo by Ralph Lauren Peace. It is this really cool black sweatshirt. It has the leather pony logo there and then it has a leather elbow patches as well. A cool shawl collar with this like a cool stitching. This piece is Polo by Ralph Lauren. I looked up comps on it. I could not find any solds on this. There is only one available and it is available on Poshmark and the person has it listed for $200 and it has one like on it. I clicked to see when she listed it. She listed it back in November so I personally think she overpriced it. So in order for me to properly price the item what I did is I searched Polo Ralph Lauren shawl collar sweater sweatshirt. I filtered by men obviously because this is a men's sweatshirt and I priced according to that. So I did price it at $120, which honestly still might be a bit much, but we're just going to go with it and I can always change the price in the future. The next item I got is by the brand Manchester LTD. And honestly, when I bought this at the bins, I had no idea what the brand was. I didn't find out until I got home and it was driving me crazy that I could not read the logo on here. I finally figured it out. And um, this is a brand that I picked up even though I didn't know it because it looked very similar to Affliction, which has done really well for me in the past. And this I priced at $30 or $35. It is a men's small, so you know. It's not the best size, but I still pick it up. And the next item I picked up is a J. Jill Love Linen Tunic. This is a size medium. I priced it at $25. Summer's coming up. It's a bright color. Hopefully it'll move fast. Next, I got a Talbot shirt and I picked it up because it is a size 3X. I love mall brands in XL and above. Plus size 3X is a perfect size for Talbots. It is a straight shirt. It's a striped shirt, lightweight, cotton, perfect for summertime. Next item I got is by the brand Weston Wear, which is another kind of like older anthropology piece. So as you can imagine, I priced it at $18. It is a size large. It's not the cutest piece in the world, not gonna lie. I'm having a little bit of regrets on this looking back on it, but oh well, it's listed in my closet. Hopefully it moves fast. Next, I picked up a True Religion men's jeans. These are these straight jeans, and I believe they're a size 34. No, they're a size 32, actually. My boyfriend's size, but we're not going to tell him. Um, so these are just a pair of light wash jeans. They do have a flaw in them, but even with that, I listed them at $40, and they do seem to have a pretty decent sell-through rate on eBay, and I've always had pretty good luck historically with True Religion men's jeans. Next, I got two pairs of pants that are the same. They're just different colors, and these are Hugo Boss pants. They're dress pants. A men's category is something I'm trying to learn more about. And I priced both of these at $30. So far, they've only had one like on each of them, and it was by the same person. I listed them on Monday, so we'll see what the traction is like on these. I think, believe these are a size 32 as well. They're 100% wall. They're Hugo Boss. They're expensive pants, but I don't think the resale is necessarily there for them, so we shall see. Next item I got is a brand that I used to like to pick up, although lately it hasn't been performing as well for me, and that is Ming Wang. But this is a size 1X, so it should perform well because it is plus size, and they are these black straight leg pull-on pants, or more of a wide leg pull-on pant. I like Ming Wang, especially the bigger the better type of thing with this brand, so we, still see, we shall see how it performs, but again, Historically, it's performed well for me. Currently, not so much. Next, I got these J. Crew. These are the Bowery Fit Gray Pants. And these seem to have a decent sell-through rate for them on eBay. They're 100% wool, nice dress pants, and I believe they're a size 32. Next, I got this at the bins, and this was a really great pickup. This is a Yeti. This is the Hopper um, strap replacement. So Yeti, I don't believe, actually sells strap replacements for their coolers. Therefore, you can only get them on the resale market which really drives up the price of them on the resale market because Yeti coolers are so insanely expensive and you're not going to buy a whole new cooler just to get a replacement strap. 
And so yeah, people go to eBay for them. I have this listed at $50 and I'm expecting to sell it around 40. The next item I have is by the brand Loft and it is says Saturday and Sunday embroidered on it. I'm trying to be very picky with the Loft I pick up, but something like this that is a size extra large I thought would perform well. I listed it at $18 and when I say perform well referencing an $18 item, I just mean I hope that, that it has a fast turnaround time. Next I have another Loft piece. This one is a size large and I really got this because it is the perfect spring colors and it is a gingham print and I also listed this at $18. Next, we have a pair of Intimately Free People shorts, and I did not look up comps on this while I was in the store, but they were only $2. Free People, that is $2 and below. I don't really look up comps, but I also don't grab all of it, all of it, um, but these were just like a nice little loungewear short. These are actually part of a two-piece set. I only have one of the pieces. I believe I priced these at $25. And the last thing I have before we get into the pile that contains my best bins find ever is this one dress and this i paid up for i paid 13 dollars for it. it is by the brand dress the population now historically this brand has not performed the best for me but i did pick up this brand this piece for 13 dollars because it's fully sequenced the sequence is in perfect condition and it's honestly a really nice kind of formal piece going into spring summer because it is a lighter color and the comps on this seem fairly decent. I priced it at $120, so now we just wait for it to sell. And now we are going into our very last pile of clothes, which is the clothes that just need a little extra love. And pretty much all of these are bins finds that had stains that I either didn't know about or I knew about and I got them anyway, thinking I could get them out. So the first thing we have is a Lululemon sports bra. I got this at the bins. I won't really buy these at the thrift store unless they have a really good sell through rate on that specific style. At the bins, I'll pick all of them up. Um, this one does have deodorant stains on it though. It just needs a little wash and it'll probably sell for around $20. Next we have Carbon 38 Crane Leggings. These I definitely would have thrown back had I seen the flaw. They do have a stain on the back, which actually wasn't that big a deal, but then they had a worse stain on this back. Although it seems kind of like surface dirt from the bins, so I think I can get it out if I wash it. Carbon 38 is insanely expensive, but the resale value isn't entirely there, so it is kind of one of those brands I'd only really pick up at the bins. Next item is a J. McLaughlin shirt. Again, a Catalina cloth shirt. This one is more of a jacquard though, because it is like a textured fabric, a nice little white top, and as you can imagine with this white top, there is a flaw on it. I knew that when I picked it up though, because it seemed to be more surface level, and if I washed it, it would come out. Next item I have is also a white item. Are you noticing a theme? White items always have flaws. This is by the brand Barefoot Dreams. I love selling this brand. As you can see, there is a flaw on the front, and I'm going to try to get it out. Worst case scenario, I keep it because it is my size, so it's kind of like I got it at the bins, and if the thing doesn't come out, I can't lose because then it's in my wardrobe. So we have this, and if I can get the flaw, I'm hoping to sell it for, I don't know, because I didn't even look up comps on that. The next item I have is an airy bralette. This I would not have picked up if I knew there was a flaw on it, but... I picked it up and I got it in my lights. There was a small stain, but again, it seems surface level. So I decided to put it in my wash pile. We'll see how it goes. And the last airy bralette that I listed sold within two days. So, I mean, it only sold for $12, but it sold in two days. That's what I mean about I don't mind cheap sales if they have quick turnaround time. I don't want an $18 item that doesn't sell till... November and I bought it in February. You know what I mean? The next item I have is a Lily Pulitzer dress and this is the newer label Lily Pulitzer and it is just this black dress and I really picked it up because it was a size extra large and also is the newer label so there's a lot of great factors. Newer style, size extra large, Lily Pulitzer. It is a solid black print though but that's still okay but it does have deodorant stains on it so I just need to wash it and I'm pretty sure those will come off. And the next item I have before we get into our very last item, the best item of the haul, is we have a cashmere sweater from Bloomingdale's and I really picked this up because it is a size 3x and it looks like this and then when I got it home I realized it did have a flaw in it. It has a small little spot on the neckline and then it has another little small spot here. I might take it to get dry clean because I'm going to dry clean this other item here so I might take this to get dry clean. To be honest I didn't really look up comps on it but it's plus size it's cashmere and even though we're going in the summer I'm always going to pick up 100% cashmere at the bins. And the last item I got which is actually I found it on Tuesday so it wasn't even the last item I sourced but the best item of the whole entire haul probably the best item I have ever pulled out of the bins. I could not believe it when I found it. And that is a Brunello Cuccinelli cashmere sweater. Just look at the label. They soak in the beautifulness of the label. I cannot believe that I pulled this out of the bin. And not only did I pull this out of the bin, I pulled this out of a bin that multiple resellers had gone through already. 
their loss my gain I oh my god I about died when I had this and I usually leave my cart parked somewhere but this I kept on me at all times just in case anybody knew what it was and they went through my cart when I found it, I did not show any excitement this is easily a $250 sale and I am just so excited by it it does have a small flaw in it I looked it over very meticulously besides the flaw I'm about to show you it is in perfect condition there is not one hole there is not one pilling on it but it has this little spot on the sleeve even with the spot on the sleeve I could easily sell it for $200 I'm gonna take it to get dry cleaned and hopefully without the spot on it I could probably list it for $300 sell it for between $250 and that $300 price it is a button front cardigan the buttons are hidden but look at the buttons on here you guys it literally says Brunello Cuccinelli on the buttons that's how you know it's high end. It's beautiful. It feels so nice. And that is everything I picked up at Goodwill Outlet, regular Goodwill, and a local thrift store this week. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to subscribe down below because next I'm going to be filming a clothes and enter haul. Now that stuff isn't listed yet, so I'll probably just show you comps instead of salts on it, but we'll see when I post the video because who even knows if I have time to film it today because I have so much to do today, but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!